His Excellency the Governor of Western Australia and our patron Malcolm McCusker and Mrs Tonya McCusker, Bishop Tom Wilmont, Chairman of Parkerville Children and Youth Care, Michelle Scott, Commissioner for Children and Young People, Mr Glenn McGrath, our key speaker, board members, supporters, staff and volunteers, welcome to our eighth annual sports charity lunch. Over the past eight years, we have collectively journeyed together to address the heinous crime of child abuse that occurs in secrecy across our nation, our city, and our neighborhood. This journey has been marked by our focus on providing resources for the wounded children that come into our care. But we've also been on a journey to try to stop child abuse occurring for our nation's children by creating awareness of the incidence of child abuse and the catastrophic effect that it has on each and every single child. To understand any complex issue, one must first make it tangible and real. To remove the problem from the statistical sum of prevalence, gross impact and cost to society. Make no mistake, the prevalence of child abuse is as disturbing as it is saddening. The health burden to its victims and the lifelong impact on young lives is a painful reality that's lived out each and every day for thousands of Australian children. My experience in sharing information with you as supporters over the years has taught me that we all do better when we can present real lives in their stories. To remove child abuse from the statistical sum and to make it something that we all understand. We need to put children at the centre of our discussions. My capacity to share with you the lived experiences of children who come into our care is a way that I can honour both their courage and tenacity of spirit as they continue on their journey of healing, whilst also enabling you to understand some of the impact and the experiences for so many children. This annual luncheon brings us all together once a year to enjoy the company of friends and colleagues, to be entertained by the skills of a comedian and the tales of an iconic sports star. But what underpins our presence here each year is our collective desire to make the world a better place. George Orwell spoke of moral effort, and by that he was referring to the capacity of everyday people to use their skills, their intellect, their individual and collective humanity and decency to redress wrongs and have the collective courage to do so. We too share a desire and an ability to apply a moral effort and make a difference in a child's life. We can do this by donating money, time or skills. And we can do this by first understanding the pain of a traumatised child. Child sexual abuse makes a child homeless in their body. Uh, ignorance of the issue makes a child homeless in their community. Child sexual and physical abuse violates the physical, spiritual and emotional integrity of a child and leaves them wounded and broken. But when we respond, when we truly respond to children who have been damaged on such a personal basis, our efforts can really help them grow strong. Humans are complex creatures. Whilst having the capacity to be humane, we also have the capacity to be cruel. Never forget that the children and young people to whom I refer here today are not in this position out of choice or by an accident, or by some horrible biological act of fate. They are in this position because they were physically, sexually, and or emotionally abused by adults in whom they placed their love and trust. That action, singular or repetitive, has changed their lives. For the past decade and a half, we have had scientific evidence that the development pathways of a child's brain are impaired because of abuse and neglect. The human brain is the organ responsible for most of what happens in our body. It enables us to walk, talk, laugh, love, create, even hate. For each of us, our brain's function is a reflection of our experiences. For the child who's experienced abuse, their brain is in a persistent state of fear. 
Not the fear of watching a scary movie or walking down a dark alleyway at night, but the fear that an abused child lives with day in, day out. Fear that you've heard your drunken father pull into the driveway and he will come in and beat you yet again or worse your mother. Fear that the cuddle that you've asked for will turn into something you did not want. Fear that your mother has taken herself to her bedroom because the depression has kicked in again or she hasn't come home tonight because she's got another heroin fix. Fear that there's no food in the house, nor has there been for several days. Fear of an unexpected, inappropriate touch that will lead to you being raped yet again by a family friend. Fear of threatening words. Fear that you are useless and worthless because those closest to you tell you every single day. Ongoing, unrelenting fear, setting a child up for not knowing what is appropriate or what isn't appropriate until fear becomes a way of life. <laughs> 